What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Rewire. It's Chris. And today, we're going to talk about this little thing called phone anxiety. All right? I read an article about it. I'm like, oh, man, I remember phone anxiety, and it was the worst. So, for those of you who don't uh, know what phone anxiety is or you never suffer from anxiety, like, the best kind of description I can give you is that it's complete insanity. And in my opinion, I think most forms of anxiety, anybody who suffers from it, like me... There's a part of you that knows that it's completely insane and what's happening is it's triggering a part of our brain that's responsible for fear, for fight, flight, or freeze, but it gets triggered for the most irrational things and one of them is picking up the phone when it rings or having to call somebody. So for those of you who don't have phone anxiety or don't know what it is, and um, I'll just explain to you kind of uh, the way my phone anxiety worked. Um, whenever the phone rang and I looked down at the caller ID, whether it was... Um, someone I had in my uh, phone book or not, no matter what number it was, the entire conversation was playing in my head within the first ring. Um, you know, the phone rang, it's like, uh, what do they want? What do they want to talk about? Is it this, this, or this? Oh, may wait, maybe they found out about that one thing, or did I say something, or did I do something? Oh, this person might be mad at me for the thing I said a month ago, and now they're finally calling me to yell at me about it. Just all these fears, and um, you know, that's part of anxiety, is that your brain goes into hyperdrive and thinks of a thousand things in a second right and it, it's completely nuts and what happens is sometimes we just don't even pick up the phone right and then it works the other way too and i know a lot of my phone anxiety was it's a form of social anxiety too where i was afraid of phone calls because of awkward silence to me awkward silence was like a panic attack in the making and knowing that part of that conversation might fall into awkward silence that made me even crazier and i grew up you know in the age where you know, texting started becoming a thing, uh, AOL messaging. I, I always, um, you know, uh, would rather talk to somebody via text, via messenger or anything like that, or email where I didn't have to worry about holding a conversation because I sounded, I, I felt like I sounded completely nuts. So, um, this study that just came out, um, you know, when they're talking about phone anxiety, they said the best thing you can do is exposure therapy. Exposure therapy is also called cognitive restructuring. And we can also call it a rewire of the brain. I plugged in the name of the show right there, right? So what it is, and um, I'll share with you my experience of how I got through my phone anxiety, something that helped. And I know a lot of you watching this are not addicts or alcoholics in recovery. But when I finally got a sponsor and got sober, he told me to call him once a day. And that was literally the hardest thing I had to do because every time I picked up the phone to call him, that that crazy thought process started going through like what's he gonna say what am i gonna say how am i gonna say this um how do i want to sound to him you know how do i want him to perceive me um i wonder if he thinks i'm doing a good job all this stuff it just it's completely nuts and i'm letting you know 99.9% .9 of the time when i called him he just said hey how's your day going good all right cool well call me back if uh, you need anything and that was the end of it but it would literally take me hours just to make that one phone one phone call. And on some days when I was feeling super crazy, I would just wait until he was at work so I can call him and leave a voicemail. And for me too, and some of you out there, like leaving a voicemail can be stressful in itself. Like, am I going to sound stupid? Do I even leave a voicemail? You know, I called to talk to him right then. Like a lot of people don't understand how much strength and courage it took me just to make that phone call. So now leaving a voicemail, that's a whole new challenge that I wasn't even prepared for. So if you do suffer from phone anxiety, the best thing that I can recommend is, is just start talking to people. Like call, put yourself in these uncomfortable situations. And part of, um, part of this whole thing is just remembering, like, you know, it's not going to kill you. You know, these are irrational fears. That's what anxiety is. It is in irrational fear, right? So just remember that and make these calls and, you know, challenge yourself, you know. Like I said, a lot of you aren't in recovery, but call somebody once a day, you know, whether it's a friend, whether it's a family member. Hell, call a grocery store. Call a, you know, um, some store that you go to just... BS your way through it. Ask them if they have some product or whatever. And what happens is that you're retraining your brain and your brain starts realizing, okay, I did this a hundred times and the world didn't end. Maybe it's okay. Um, because now I can call just about anybody. I can do videos like this. I do groups. Like I'm telling you, I used to have crippling social anxiety, phone anxiety and stuff like that. And it destroyed my life. And it's actually what led to my alcoholism and addiction. 
So if you do suffer from this thing, just take these baby steps, do one thing at a time, expose yourself, because what you're doing is you're training your brain to realize that this isn't a big deal. It's not um, something to be afraid of. It's something that you can get through, you know? So I hope this helps you out. Um, if you have phone anxiety or know somebody who might have phone anxiety, you know, please um, feel free to like and share this video. All right, and I'll also put a link to the article I just read um, in the uh, comments. All right, have a great day, everybody.